Unfortunately, guys, season three ended with a little bit of disappointment. I mean, we didn't deserve to win the Premier League, but of course, Manchester United went on to win it. And there is Jaden Sancho, who has haunted me throughout this series, sitting next to the Premier League trophy and it's got red and white ribbons it was destined to be ours but no unfortunately not so this is where we are at the moment at the end of the season confirmation of the league table one point one point i cannot believe it a 72 manager confidence rating it's not awful to be fair we did get the golden boot with Enesiri, who i don't think i'm gonna sell by the way i don't think i can guys but i will be replacing neves I will be selling Neves. That reminds me, actually, guys, on Thursday, there is a video coming out on the EFL YouTube channel, which I have taken part in. Uh, I had to do a forfeit, and one of the forfeits was to sell one of my best players in my own career mode. So I'm wriggling out Neves. I think that's going to be my way around this because I was tempted to sell him anyway, and I think that confirmed it for me doing this forfeit. So when that video comes out on Thursday, I'll make sure to show you that portion in my video. Continental was to reach the, Euro, uh, the UEFA Champions League final, which, of course, we got to the semis, so it wasn't too bad. Domestically, we won the FA Cup, so we did reach the final, but we did not win the league. But again, second place, not too bad. Financially, we've almost complete that. So in general, successful season? Well, we got an FA Cup to show for it, but next season, it is all about the Premier League and hopefully the Champions League. Now, before we begin season four, we do have a sponsor for this video, and I'm gonna show you the app right now. It's called Loot Boy. Right now, there's over 10 million registered players and a rating of 4.6 stars on the Google Store. It's a great way to get FIFA points. You can earn those in the loot packs. And get this, right now, there is a chance to win a signed Rooney football boot. You can go ahead and download the app for free right now on iOS, Android. You can play it on PC as well. What you can do is go ahead and collect loot coins by reading a comic, which they release every single week. And also you can get yourself diamonds. With diamonds, which you can buy with real money or you can earn them within the app, you can get premium loot packs for free and you can get some really good stuff, including FIFA points. So let's go ahead and open up 10 premium loot packs. I don't have time to grind all the diamonds, which I'm sure you guys will. So I've gone ahead and got some diamonds here and I'm gonna open up 10 packs and I'm gonna show you the highlights. Oh, there we have it. 500 FIFA points, get in there. Let's see what we get this time. And we got some in-game items, 1,250 points as well. Nice. And we got Mass Effect 2. Okay, so I've opened them all. Let's go to my inventory. This is where you can see everything you got, including, of course, those FIFA points. Do you know what, though? I'm going to give it away. I'm just going to scratch this. Go, go, go. Go ahead and claim it, guys. Loot Boy themselves want to give one of you guys 12,000 FIFA points. All you have to do is create an account on Loot Boy. Put your account name in the comments and we will pick one of you guys for 12,000 FIFA points. Anything that's highlighted in gold, so you can see a couple of games that I got. These are full versions of games. And if like me, you buy 10 packs, you get a Gold Rush bonus loot pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that right now. What's it gonna be? We've got four items and it's five diamonds we've got a season ticket a month free nice 100 points and that guys is loot boy lots of fun to be had so make sure you download it there is a link in the description and if you redeem using the code mgh-11 you will receive a free community pack with diamonds and loot coins and much more. Thanks to Loot Boy for sponsoring this video. Let's crack on and get into season four. Right now, I believe we just completed the financial goal. There you go. Another low priority one done. So it hasn't affected my manager rating, which is a little bit of a shame. But what we're going to do now is just quickly go through the squad. Let's have a look and see what's going on. Saka's back from injury. That's good to see. If we go and filter by overall, let's see how we're looking. So we've got one player, Erdegaard, 90 rated or more. And Nasiri and Neves are both 89. Martinelli, 88. Tierney, 88. Saka's 87. Honestly, on average, we are looking very good at the moment. We've obviously got a few players down here in the low 70s, a few of them out on loan. But a lot of these players 
will be leaving, the ones that are lower down there and that I'm not using so much. We've got quite a big squad at the moment. And now, just before we end the season, let's take a look at some of the other leagues and see what the tables look like. Let's have a look. So let's go to, let's scroll down here. Let's have a look at the championship out of interest. Norwich are coming back up with West Ham. I forgot they got relegated. Interesting. Let's keep going down here. Let's have a look in the French League. PSG won, of course, with just one loss. Very nicely done. Let's go over to the Bundesliga. Bayern have won the league by, by two points. Wow, that was close. Leverkusen in second. Okay, let's have a look at some others here. Italy, we've got... Wow. Juventus are down in fourth place. They're not having a good season in real life, so... That's realistic, but it is Atalanta, I believe, isn't it? At the top there. Lazio are in sixth. It's a shame they've lost those naming rights. Napoli in second place. Look at Milan. Wow, they're doing quite well. And uh, what else can we take a look at? The Eredivisie, of course. Ajax have won it. Feyenoord in second. PSV in third. Let's keep going down here and have a look in Portugal. We've got Sporting winning the title there with Porto in second place. Benfica in third. And then let's have a look in Spain as well. Real Madrid have won it with Atletico Madrid in second and Barcelona in third. Interesting. Well, when you get to this screen, you know you've done your job. You're not getting sacked. We are loading into season four right now, which will be the final season of this career mode. I'm pretty sure a few changes to the squad, but basically not changing it too much. We're going with the same players, maybe one or two players to be coming in um I, I just want to win I want to win something big that's 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 the end goal here of course it is I would love a Champions League but I think ultimately the Premier League is what I really want even though Arsenal have won that unbeaten by the way we haven't won a Champions League before so um I'd like to get both but I just I don't know if that's gonna happen no need for a pre-season tournament god those things are so boring and we don't need the money so there we go guys season four is here I've noticed, look at that, Erdegaard finally can be converted back to a cam. And that means he stays 90. I thought he was going to go up to 91, to be honest, but that's fine. So what do we do, guys? We've got a lot of players playing for their international teams at the moment. It's kind of annoying how you can't see their rating when they're missing from the squad. So if I go into the transfer hub, what do we want to do? Let's have a look at some of these ratings. Have they gone up? Right now, I'm thinking Sanchez in and... Uh, Neves out and I'm also thinking Sterling in Pepe out two realistic signings that seem to be happening right now Pepe apparently is going to be leaving Arsenal in the summer I don't think Arteta really rates him of course Arteta didn't sign him uh, and you know Neves whilst he's a great player he's not the most exciting I feel like bringing someone in like Sanchez who we all know FIFA players love this guy he might be a little bit more interesting so I kind of feel like just going with it you know 75 to 100 million and 110 to 162 million my god that is a lot of money well first we'll go through the squad and we'll put players up for sale and um let's see if we get some offers coming in quite soon well that's not ideal really the first offer we get in season four is a loan offer for Balogun, which i'm going to accept but i do not want loan with option to buy. I just want a simple one-year loan. Look, he's probably never going to really make it, but I don't want to sell him. He's he's a big part of Arsenal's future, potentially. He's a great young player, but I probably could just sell him, couldn't I? We get a loan offer for Aziz. <laughs> uh, okay, well, he's going to PSV. That's a really good one. Again, though, I only want to loan him for a season. I don't want to sell these guys. We can go ahead and accept the Balogun loan deal. Are we going to get anything substantial coming in? I've got so many players up for sale right now. Patino loan offer. Come on. Really? Well, I'm going to accept a one-year loan because I want all three of these players to be loaned out. This is ridiculous, though. I've got at least, I'd say, five or six really good players up for sale. And I haven't had a single one. There we go. Napoli. That's weird. They were trying to sign Pepe and we, we got him. It was the same with Gabriel from Lille. Pepe uh, and, and Gabriel were both being courted by Napoli. That's hilarious. Okay, let me go ahead and accept these loan deals. So that's three players going out on loan if they accept them. And Pepe, 
I'm just going to let him go, guys. Look, I don't necessarily think he's... I mean, I don't, I don't think I should necessarily sell him. But if we are bringing in someone, in, someone like Sterling, it makes sense, I think. So I think, although it, it, it kind of sucks, I think Pepe... I think it's time to go. I think he's going to go in real life. He's got one year left on his contract right now, by the way. So 55.9 million. He is going to go in real life. I think we all know it. And it means that Nelson can get a bit more game time. And of course, Sterling is joining. So it's going to be an interesting one. Balogun's loaned out. We get an offer here for Dest. And they are offering me Paulinho. He's a great player. I like Paulinho. 81 rated Cam. Obviously, we're not interested in that. So we'll go ahead and delegate this. I just want money. I'll just take 40, to be honest. I only signed this guy because of the um, the objective to sign North American players. And yeah, he had a couple of good games, but I've never felt like it was real, you know? Okay, so that looks like it's going to go through. Pepe's gone. Aziz is gone. Patino's gone. And it looks like we will be getting 40.2 million for Dest. So we easily have money now to sign Sterling and Sanchez, should we want them both. Uh, Isaac apparently has been um, bought. So we'll check where he's gone in a moment. We've got an offer here for Delap. Again, another player that we signed because of an objective. I'm going to let him go. We're not using him. And Dest has been sold. Interesting. Atletico Madrid are interested in Neves and they are offering me Matthias Kunha. I think that's how you say it. Maybe not. Again, though, I'm not really interested in the player, but I will take just cash. Do you know what? A nice round number. 100 million as the starting offer. And I don't want to sell him for less than, let's say, 80. Realistically, it doesn't matter too much, the money. But yeah, I'm giving them a pretty good deal there just to get Neves gone. I haven't really worried about the transfer budget at all in this series, have I? And there you go, 96 million. And we get 2.6 million for Delap. It's not bad. Neves has been a great player, guys. I will be honest, though. He was not the signing I wanted. I really wanted Basuma. Obviously, things happened. People wanted me to sell him. Neves was great, but um, I wanted to change up that position. So now that he's going, I think it's time that we do bring in Sanchez. He's the player I want. He's injury prone, I know, but I think he it won't be a problem. I don't think it'll be a problem at all. Uh, would Leo be interested in one of my players that I'm looking to sell? I don't think there's any other midfielders I want to sell other than Cole Palmer. Don't want to sell any strikers. I don't want to sell any center backs. Don't want to sell any fullbacks. I mean... It would, it, it would have been Pepe going back to, to Lille, but we'll, we'll go for just straight up cash. Let's throw in a bid of 75 million. There's no way that's going to get accepted. Oh my God, we've got over 300 million. What? That is ridiculous. They want 97. It's a lot. Uh, give me 85. Go on. 85 million pounds. They really want that 97.1. They said it's non-negotiable. I'm going to test them on that. Ha! 95. There you go. Non-negotiable. What a load of rubbish. We went from 75 to 85 to 95. And I think that is perfectly fine. It's basically a straight swap. And although Neves is higher rated, I guarantee you Sanchez will play better. Because he's, he's more of a FIFA signing, isn't he? I know it's kind of... Meh. But he's heavily linked with Arsenal in real life. So again, I'm, I'm keeping this realistic, um, even though we're four seasons in now. Important as his role. Just accept that. I don't know why I counted it. Contract length of four years. That's not a problem. No release clause required. What's his wage going to be then? I might just throw him on 100k. Welcome to London, boy. Come on. Accept it. Oh my god, he wants more. Okay, let's remove that bonus. I'll give you 110 and I'll give you 950 as a sign on. Just under a million pounds. Really? Oh, whatever. 120K. Take it. Renato Sanchez. He is going to improve this squad. He is. Him and Partey in midfield. Oh, beautiful. Next is Sterling. I want him. 
I want to sign Sterling, so I'm just going to do it. We've got a game against United coming up. Let's get him in the squad. Let's do it. We will do a transfer fee. 100 million. It's going to be at least 120, probably. 118, I was close. Uh, 110. Do you reckon they'd take 110? Come on, Pep. Come on. Do it. Nice. Again, Sterling, heavily linked with Arsenal. It's not going to happen, but it's a signing that is interesting, different. He's he's a marquee signing, isn't he? So let's get Sterling in. Let's negotiate a massive contract with Raheem here. He's going to want a lot of money. I know that for sure. 260k he's on. We'll go crucial. He will be starting, and I think I could give Martinelli go, a go as a striker. But um, I think, you know, Sterling has to start. There's no doubt about it. Crucial, three years. Yep, that's fine. I can't believe he's 29 years old now. It's crazy. We've gone so far already in this uh, in this save. No need for a release clause. I could even play Sterling up top. You know how I said in the series, fantastic and all, but I kind of want the polar opposite now. Someone short, really quick. I think that's what this gives us. Uh, I'm going to offer him 250. 250k, so it's slightly less but I will also offer him 2 million as a sign-on. What do you reckon? And he's accepted it. Just like that. Two signings done. Easy. So now they will both feature against Manchester United in the next game. I'm going to give Raheem Sterling number 11 and Martinelli. Ooh. <laughs> Martinelli should get a different number. I, I can't have Sterling on a random number. He's 7 or 11 or 10 for me. I think I'm going to give him 11. What if... I let go of Abraham and convert Martinelli to a striker. And then I've got number nine available for Martinelli. Ooh, tempting. Look, Sterling has to have a number. Like I said, number 11 is fine. Yeah, I think I might do that because although Tammy's been good for us, he's not a standout striker and I want to give, I, I, I want to give Martinelli a go there. So I might try and see if we can get some good money for Abraham. I'm definitely keeping in the series. So I think something's got to give and maybe that that's Abraham. It's only going to take nine weeks to get Martinelli in that striker role. I think that's the plan, guys. End the series and Martinelli as the strikers. And then that means Sterling goes over on that left side. I think that's his best position. And we can swap them. You know, Martinelli can go back out on the left. Sterling can play up front. My God, we've got some squad depth now, haven't we? But look at this, guys. Once Neves is gone, I kind of only have Nelson to be the other winger. Oh, this is a tough one. Maybe I keep Martinelli as a, sh a left winger and I don't sell Abraham then. Maybe that's the right thing to do. Yeah, I, th I think it is, guys. I think Martinelli should stay as a left winger then. I can still play him as a striker, of course. But it doesn't work on the bench if I sell Abraham. Because Nketiah, no, oh, see, this is, oh, this is what I love about Karimo, but also hate about it. I'm, I'm very OCD. I want the perfect squad, and I feel like I'm going to be a player short no matter what, unless I keep Abraham. I don't know what to do. I need to think about it. Well, Neves is gone. We've got an email from Tammy. Oh dear, <laughs> I, I shortlisted him for sale, and he's just saying he's not unhappy about it. Uh, I'm just looking at options. That that's the real answer. Honestly, that is. I I don't I don't know, mate. Let, let's just play against Man United. Can't believe they destroyed me last season in two competitions to to win the Premier League ahead of me by one point, to knock me out of the Champions League. The least we can do is beat them in this Community Shield game. Come on. Back at Wembley again, of course. Fond memories here. Let's just get straight into the game here. Oh my god. End the series as the Tifo. <laughs> that looks kind of funny. He, of course, starts with Sterling over on that left wing. Saka on the right. Let's do it. Don't forget, it's a first start for Sanchez as well in midfield. He's going to change the way my midfield works. Just because he's a bit quicker. Him and Partey. What a combination that is. Here is Sanchez. Oh, I need to update his boots. We can't have him wearing his old ones. Into Sterling here. Go on. Debut goal, no. Saved by Henderson. Good start. Wait, who's the number 23? Is that Isaac? 
I think it is. Manchester United have signed Isaac, a target of mine twice now in this career mode, and both times I've decided not to sign him. Interesting. We'll see how he gets on in this game. Here's Partey. Over here to Erdegaard. To Sanchez. Over to Sterling. Oh, trying to get that back into the middle for Erdegaard. Sanchez tried to get it, but that's unlucky. Well on, Tierney. Let's go. End the series. Over to Erdegaard. Saka's going to make his run. Play it through. Oh, he's in. Is the keeper coming out? He is. No. Oh. Henderson. He wasn't sure if he could pick it up. Well, that was almost a massive, massive error from the English goalkeeper. Shame I couldn't capitalise on that. Oh, no. Rashford's in. Ben White to come across here. Doesn't get the block in. And Isaac scores. Against the run of play. He is going to be lethal for them. Honestly, he will be right there at the end of the season as a, goal, a golden boot potential winner. He's that good. He really is very good. Am I going to regret not signing Isaac? Nah, I don't think so. I think Sterling and Sanchez are the perfect signings this season. I don't really need to do anything else. But uh, for sure, Isaac will get Manchester United a lot of points by himself this season. He's a game winner. He's just, yeah, winning them the game here as well, which is not good. Good turn from it in the series. It's a poor pass, though. Cannot afford to let United score again here. Here is Sancho. Plays it to Isaac. Tommy Yass is going to have to close the gap down on Tellez here. And he does so very well. Let's give that to Sanchez. On the left for Sterling. Let's go. End the series. In behind. He should be able to carry this forward. He's still going here. Just hit it. Oh, my God. He's hit the bar. No. Sanchez wins the header. In the series again. Back for Sanchez. Go on, hit it. Oh, that's disappointing. Half an hour left, guys. Right now, I feel like I could potentially get the equaliser, but we need some luck. How about that from Erdegaard? What a pass. Here is Saka. Had to cut back there. Partey. Sanchez. Erdegaard. Chips it. Or not chips it. Tries to finesse, finesse it and it just comes off the defender. Probably time to make a change now. Wait, what? Oh my god, I thought it took a deflection. Okay, well, I am going to try it. Sterling is going to go up front. And I'm going to put Martinelli on the left. I want to give that a go. Sterling as a striker gets a minus five though. That kind of isn't great um okay what about martinelli as a striker he gets a plus three interesting it is just the shooting stat 85 compared to 82 so wait saka's got 81 shooting and up front he gets a minus three okay let's go with martinelli is he the answer i've brought on mckenny as well by the way mckenny and sanchez in midfield oh my god no the pass from martinelli yes tne He's got in ahead there. Martinelli over the top. Go on. Finish it. Oh. He's going to get to the rebound. Nope. Lindelof was there. We are running out of time. Less than 10 minutes to go here. This feels harsh. I feel like United have maybe had two or three good opportunities. Otherwise, we've dominated the ball. We've had more chances, more shots. Feels kind of bad. That's oh, a good ball. Go on. Yes! Martinelli in injury time equalises at Wembley. And that's his first goal as our new number nine. It actually suits him. Oh, damn it. Maybe I should sell Tammy then. Maybe Nketiah does have a spot on the bench. He's just not that top, 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 top quality. But does it matter when I can rotate Sterling, Saka? All of these guys can rotate around the front three with, with some incredible players that can come off the bench in midfield as well it, it might be okay honestly I'm I'm think I think I'm steering towards that now Martinelli in the number nine shirt it does kind of suit him you know well it looks like we are going to penalties guys interesting up against this Man United side I've had a really good performance I don't deserve to lose this so I'm not going to I'm not going to lose this well, apparently Sanchez is my best penalty taker, which is a little bit of a weird one. Sterling, McKenney, Saka, and Martinelli. I mean, Martinelli's got to be at least a little bit higher. Go with Erdegaard as well. All right, here we go. 
Do I go bottom left every time again? <laughs> I might try at least the first one in the bottom left. If this goes in, no problem. Which it hasn't. I'm not doing that. But I'm going to save bottom left. Here we go. Rashford's going to go bottom left. He missed. <laughs> bottom left. Here we go. Sterling scores. Get in there. Bottom left again. Do you know what? I'm going to do it. Bottom left. Oh, okay. Last time we did this, it worked. And I've done it in Ultimate Team a few times. Just bottom left every time. Whee! Martinelli gets his goal as well. Paqueta next. Bottom left. He's missed. He's hit the bar. Saka. <laughs> bottom left corner. <laughs> Please score. No! <laughs> it's not working this time. I'm, I'm going to stick with it. Bottom left. Hey! We've saved it. So now, if we score this with Erdegaard in the bottom left corner, we win the community shield. And we've done it. And that was the best penalty of them all. Get in there. What a start to the new season, guys. A bit of silverware already. Look at me go. Faster than all the other players. Two brand new signings that had good debuts. I think I've got an idea what I want to do with the squad going into the final season of this series. Good episode.